Start your day asking God, I know wisdom is in me, Lord. Help me seek it and pursue it and take the time to wait on it because I don't want to do foolish things and then get the result of my foolishness. talking this weekend about making right choices and it's so important so 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 important that we understand the, the weight of our choices and the weight of our decisions in Deuteronomy 30 19 the Bible says I set before you life and death which both of those are pretty important subjects <laughs> I don't think he's really talking about breathing versus not breathing I think he's talking about having a real life versus walking around breathing but having a life that's full of all kinds of death and misery I set before you life and death you choose wow I guess that pretty much says it all and then he says choose life that you and your descendants might live you know it's amazing all the decisions that we make and I don't even think we're aware of how many we do make but because of studying for this I've become a little more aware in the last few days and so I think we need to begin to take more responsibility for the anger the frustration the upset the lack of peace that we often have in our lives because really you can do something about it you have to understand that first you can do something about it everybody say I can, I can do something about it and it's simply by making choices now we're going to look at a fair amount of scripture this morning and I think that's good for us to do that wisdom is in us the Bible says in first Corinthians that Jesus is made unto us wisdom from God so you have wisdom it's in you the thing I think we need to do is live a little bit deeper and there again that's another kind of real spiritual term yes the deeper life and nobody knows what that is living deeper just simply means that you take the time to go beyond what you think what you want and what you feel and you you just go a little bit deeper to see what you're sensing inside because that's where wisdom is at wisdom and peace work together they're like twins when you walk in wisdom then you're always going to have peace so if you don't have peace it probably means you're not walking in wisdom you're not making the best choice if any man is in Christ the Bible says that he's free indeed whom the son is set free is free indeed and we love the word free we love that freedom but we also have to understand that freedom comes with responsibility in other words freedom is not free Jesus provides it free but having the freedom to make your own choices and to actually choose life or death and not have God push one or the other off on us is an amazing liberty but each one of those choices that we make produce something in our life the Bible calls it sowing and reaping don't be foolish it says a man will only reap what he sows so if I sow wisdom I'm going to reap all the promises of wisdom and if I sow foolishness then I'm going to reap all the rewards of foolishness let's, let's just take a little survey how many of you know if I said to you would it be wise or foolish to sit around all day and feel sorry for yourself which one would it be you guys are going to find out you're really smart <laughs> if uh, if somebody offends you and you have a choice of quickly forgiving them and being free from it all day or sitting somewhere and seething inside with anger and hatred would it be wise or foolish to forgive see you're really smart 
If somebody does something and you can either be suspicious or believe the best, would it be wise to be suspicious or believe the best? You see, the thing that has taken me about 40 years to realize, well, maybe I got it about somewhere around the 30 year mark, is that all of these things that God tells me that we tend to think are so hard, it's so hard to forgive. It's just so hard to believe the very best. It's so hard to not feel sorry for yourself when you get so mistreated in life. <laughs> really, those things are not hard. The thing that's hard is giving in to those things because all they do is feed misery. They're all food for misery. So if you really want to be happy, which I recommend, and you really want to be peaceful, which I recommend, then the best thing to do is go a little bit deeper than what you want, think, and feel and do what you know is right. Now I want to tell you something, I want you to remember this. Every time you do what's right while it still feels wrong, you're growing. Every time you do what's right while it still feels wrong, you're growing. Now, if you've grown in that area and you can easily do what's right, that's still a good thing, but you're not growing spiritually in that area. However, there will be another area that God will be happy to show you <laughs> that you can grow in, which means that choosing the right thing is not going to be easy. There's a great example in Luke chapter 5, and I'm not going to have us go there, but Luke chapter 5, the first seven verses. The disciples had been fishing all night and they hadn't caught anything. Now you just imagine working all night, not one fish. They pulled into the dock the next morning. They were washing their nets, putting them up. That was a huge job back then, no electronic equipment. They're discouraged from getting no fish, tired from being up all night. They've got all this stuff put away. And Jesus gets into the boat and says to them, go out into the deep water and fish some more. <laughs> now he was basically telling them the reason why you didn't get anything is because you're fishing in shallow water. The shallow water represents shallow living for the Christian. It represents living in that soulish realm of I want, I think, I feel, I want, I think, I feel, I want, I think, I feel. As long as I keep my flesh happy, then I'm happy. But when he told them to go out into deep water, I love what Peter said. He said, Master, we toiled all night and we're exhausted. But on the ground of your word, we will go out and lower the nets again. That's a huge message. I can make a four-part series off of Luke 5. Because he was saying, look, I don't think what you're saying is a good idea. We've already fished all night and caught nothing. I don't want to. I don't feel like it. But because you said to, I will. Let me tell you something. Your personal I will is one of the strongest things that you have going for you. When David said, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad. I don't think he got up and felt happy that day. Matter of fact, I think he probably was on the verge of having a lousy day. And he said, I'm going to make a decision. Most of the things that bug us are no big deal anyway. You deal with them, you go on about your business. Life is not perfect. People aren't perfect. They don't always do the right thing. So get over it. Amen. Tell somebody next to you, get over it. <laughs> you didn't even say it like you meant it. <laughs> Don't get lazy on me this morning. Some of you turned to the person, get over it. <laughs> and then the rest of you didn't even do it. You know, if you can't even do what I asked you to do, how are you going to do what God asked you to do? All how our lives would change if we just make better choices. And by the way, when Peter and the disciples went out into the deep water, the Bible says that they caught so many fish that they had to call for their partners in other boats to come. And they filled up all the boats 
and still had an overflowing abundance. Well, I got the message about 20 years ago from Luke 5 that if I will go beyond what I want, think, and feel, and I'll live deeper, walking in wisdom, making choices that maybe don't feel good, but I know are right, I know their wisdom, then I'm going to have my boat full and I'm going to have an overflowing abundance in my life to give to all of you who come and want help. And the same thing can happen to you. You can have an overflowing abundance to give to your family. How you live in front of your children is going to make a huge difference in what they do with their life. Just taking them to church on Sunday is not enough. You need to live the life in front of them. Don't expect somebody else to raise your kids. Teach them not to inherit your faith, but to develop their own. Now, wisdom does now what it's going to be happy with later on. It doesn't do what feels good now. It doesn't necessarily do what's going to get a quick result. Wisdom does now what it's going to be happy with later on. That way you don't end up having to live your life in regret. Don't be the kind of person that gets to be 75, 80 years old and then every day spend your life wishing you would have and wishing you had and wish you hadn't of and wishing you wouldn't of. Make right choices now. Amen. We're going to look at a few scriptures in Proverbs. Proverbs 2, 1 through 6. My son, if you'll receive my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to skillful and godly wisdom, and inclining and directing your heart and mind to understanding, applying all your powers to the quest for it, Yes, if you cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek wisdom, the word seek is a very, very strong word. It means to crave, pursue, and go after with all of your might. If you will seek wisdom the same as you would for silver and search for skillful and godly wisdom as you would for hidden treasure, then, everybody say then, then. after you sought wisdom, <laughs> Then you will understand the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of our omniscient God. You know what? I believe we should be friends with God, but I'll be very, very honest with you. I think today people have too loose of an attitude toward God. And I can tell you that He is God Almighty to be reverenced and properly feared, not afraid of God. But I think we should be afraid not to obey God. And I don't think most people are. We like to study about the love and the mercy and the forgiveness side of God, but what about the justice side of God? We don't want to forget that side. I think when we know that we've displeased God, we should tremble inside, not afraid of Him, not because every mistake we make, He's going to bang us over the head or we're going to go to hell. God's a merciful God, but we need to love Him and respect Him and reverence Him enough to just do what he tells us to do out of love. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a little more preaching about sin. Hmm. That went over big, didn't it? I bet if I'd have said miracles, everybody would have shouted and yelled. Anyway, let's put the scripture back up, please. For the Lord gives skillful and godly wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So seek wisdom, cry out for it every day of your life. Start your day asking God, I know wisdom is in me, Lord. Help me seek it and pursue it and take the time to wait on it. Because I don't want to do foolish things and then get the result of my foolishness. Proverbs 4, 8. Prize wisdom highly and exalt her and she will exalt and promote you. Promote you. How do you get promotion? Use wisdom. 
Some of you will never be promoted on your job because you do dumb things at work. You play on the internet all day and when the boss walks in, you act like you're working. Make all your personal phone calls on working time when you should take your lunch hour or do it before or after work unless it's an emergency. Take all the office supplies home, rubber bands, pencils, paper clips. So you become a thief and then wonder why you're not blessed. Get to work late, leave early. Come on. I know, I, really, I know that's none of you. I can, I mean, I can tell that's none of you, but maybe for some poor soul watching by TV. <laughs> we have to walk in integrity and do the right thing when nobody's looking. People who do the right thing when nobody's looking have finally come to the point where they're living under the all-seeing eye. Promotion, everybody wants promotion, and the Bible says true promotion comes from God. And I want to see people promoted in every way. But if you want promotion, then you have to behave yourself wisely and you have to be willing to make an investment. I had somebody say to me recently, and I loved it, I'm going to make myself so valuable that you can never do without me. I thought, yes. I love that kind of a spirit. I'm going to make myself so valuable that you can never do without me. Don't be the kind of person who goes to work and does as little as you can. Do as much as you can. Be the kind of person who goes the extra mile. And if you're going to leave a job, don't get lazy the last month you're there because you know you're leaving. Do an excellent job to the very last moment that you leave because how you leave is how you enter. It's all about the spirit that you let get on your life. You know, we look at people in the Bible and, you know, David was a man who ended up being king. And as long as David walked in wisdom, he was promoted and he was blessed. And every time he acted foolishly, he had war and misery. The Bible just says over and over that David behaved wisely. He behaved himself wisely and he was promoted. And he, be he behaved himself wisely and he was promoted. And he behaved himself wisely and he was promoted. Can you say this morning, if I behave wisely, I'll get promoted? So there's all kinds of scriptures in the Bible, especially in Proverbs, that talk about wisdom and the benefits of wisdom. Now, let me talk to you this morning about a few specific things about wisdom. Foolishness means without common sense. You know, I really believe, if you want to know the truth, I think one of the reasons why our ministry has lasted all these years and we've enjoyed success is David and, I are, Dave and I are not highly educated, but we've just got a lot of common sense. And you know, when you have common sense, there's just some things you don't get up in front of people and say. There's some things you don't do. I mean, we've got enough common sense to know that if you want to have people work for you, you've got to treat them decent. And You know, just common sense goes a long way. It amazes me some of the, the foolish things that people do. Wisdom is just plain common sense. If you want to have friends, treat people right. If you want to have people like you, don't try to control them all the time. There's just a few basic guidelines that, you know, are pretty cool. Not too hard. Living your life imprudently is foolish. Living inconsiderately, not governing your lusts, being dull and sluggish and foolish. Well, we see that wisdom is exercised in the choices that we make. Let's talk about five areas, five areas where we need to use wisdom because wise choices release power in our life. First area I want to talk to you about is using wisdom in time management. You know, everybody's got the same amount of time. Every single person on the planet gets 24 hours a day. 
So why is it that some people accomplish so much and some people accomplish nothing? Why is it that some people are peaceful and they seem to get a fair amount done but they enjoy the journey and other people are just frustrated and frantic and ready to tear their hair out all the time and spending all kinds of money on stress medicine. It's all about choice. Poor time management creates stress and it drains your power. It's just kind of like we've all got a power pipe connected to God. But when we do foolish things, it's like poking holes in that power pipe and the power drains out. You have to live with margin. Margin means you leave a little time in between things to breathe, to think, to be, to enjoy. And I know about this because I've lived on both sides of it. I was a massive, major workaholic. And I decided a few years ago that I wasn't going to live like that anymore. And I honestly just got to the point where I told Dave, I said, either, either things are going to change or I'm, we're going to downsize this ministry because I am not going to live like this anymore. And I had to learn a lot of things. I had to learn that I'm not the only one that can help people. And I had to learn that no matter how many people you help, there's still going to be millions that need to be helped. And it's not going to help anybody if I kill myself trying to help people. And one of the main things, believe it or not, that Jesus died for us to have is joy. He said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And I believe it's my responsibility to enjoy the life that God has given me. I actually think that I'm not doing God justice if I just don't, if I do nothing but work. I don't think it's godly to do that. Matter of fact, I think when we do that, we're breaking every kind of commandment and all the health rules that are out there. Well, you can complain about your schedule and complain and complain and complain, but you're the only one that can change it. You made it, you're the only one that can change it. Now, see, right there we have again responsibility. How many of you feel like you're too busy? See, some of you have been so busy you're too tired to put your hand up, but... How many of you have more than an occasional, we all have an occasional day of frustration because we get a little more on our plate or we have plans and something happens and, you know, we can handle those days. Our body is built to handle those days. Everybody's going to have to hurry occasionally or push it in high gear occasionally or you may have a little season, a couple of weeks where you, you know, you have to do something like that. But when you, if it becomes more than occasionally and you would say that a peaceful day is the occasional thing then there's a problem. Let me tell you loud and clear, it is a problem if you're living like that. And you will pay the price for it sooner or later. Your body will begin to break down under it. You're not gonna be happy, and usually unhappy people make other people unhappy. And we end up blaming everybody else because we're not happy when really we're the only one that can do anything about it. Now look at Mama Joyce for a minute and I'm gonna tell you something. Everybody looking? Everybody watching my TV looking? Quit combing your hair for a minute, quit putting on your makeup, quit cooking your breakfast, and look. If you are not happy, then do something about it. How totally useless it is to just sit around and be unhappy and blame somebody else God will change things in our life, but it's not going to come from waving a magic wand over with us. He's going to show us something to do or tell us something not to do. And then when we obey God, things will change. Making wise choices brings peace to our lives. Wisdom makes us successful in our relationships, valuable at work, and stable in our finances. It affects every aspect of living. So there's no reason why we should not seek wisdom because it is, as the Bible says, one of the most valuable things in the world.
But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and, you know, taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, it's really great to have the ability to feed children all around the world. And I have a goal and a desire to keep feeding more and more all the time. This after-school feeding program serves an average of 90 to 100,000 hot meals per One year. One meal for these kids is, is survival. Well, I'm here in Thailand at one of our children's homes. You can feed, house, and educate a child. Hope Cambodia has been absolutely amazing. We've opened 15 different orphanages. And we're so grateful to be able to build this well here in Sri Lanka. We love to get clean drinking water to people. Well, so the water they're drinking is not making their children sick, and it's, it's not dirty, contaminated water. <laughs> definitely feel in Haiti just the absolute desperation. I'm at the Cure Hospital in Malawi, Africa. A huge line of people who are waiting to see our nurses and our doctors. Many doctors and medical people have volunteered their time. We are in Summers Point, New Jersey. Well, today we're, we're in Joppa, Missouri. We're here in Haiti in the village, and we're about to move people into brand new houses we've built. The winds were so constant with these big, big gusts. It was terrifying. 150 or more were killed. Thousands left homeless. Hey, you there, guys? Uh, a little gift from Joyce Five Ministries. Here in Zimbabwe, I was able to hand out the two millionth bag in a prison. That you can have a different life today. Don't know how many, you know, lives you guys save by coming in and showing the love that you guys show. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is, this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. Well, you certainly don't have to look very hard these days to find things to worry about. If you turn on the news for even five minutes, you can feel like the world is just spinning out of control. That's why I'm so excited about my new devotional, Trusting God Day by Day. These devotions will help you change your focus from your circumstances to the truth that's in God's Word. You know, it's time for us to enter into the peace that God has made available to us where we can enjoy our lives. And that comes only from trusting God day by day. Begin je dag met God met de 365 overdenkingen voor het hele jaar. Bestel het boek God Vertrouwen van dag tot dag nu via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. De computerdeskundigen van Joyce Meyer Ministries werken keihard aan onze Nederlandse website. Hey, does anybody need any more coffee? Be right back. Ga naar onze nieuwe site joyce-meijer.nl en volg ons op Facebook.